Hey everyone, welcome back to another Polyridge 2 video. Here what I want to do is make a crossbow. And originally I didn't quite know what I wanted to do with this, but what I ended up making is a reloading crossbow. Which I haven't seen done before, it wouldn't surprise me if it's been done before, but I wanted to give a shot at it myself, so... Yeah, here's my process. Also, as a quick side note, I'm going to keep referring to this as a crossbow. It's not a crossbow, it's more like a slingshot, but I was just incorrect on that. Alright, so the first thing I'm doing here is stretching the islands apart 250 meters. Right now, I'm just going to try some experiments into some different designs and see what works. So you see this uh, platform system I have going on here. This just gives something for the springs to attach to and also for the car to rest on. So you see I'm adding in the car right now, it's just a dune buggy. Seemed appropriate for launching stuff. So now I'm adding in some roads and these are going to be the cradle. This is what's actually going to well, hold the car while the springs pull it forward. Also get something for the springs to attach onto. And you see that this is sort of a diamond spring setup, and the idea is that it's better than just a single spring since it has five springs all pulling in the same direction. There's one in the center that's pushing it apart, but it's the same idea. You see how it kind of compresses and pulls it forward. So the first thing I had about an eighth of the way there, which is okay, but it's not close. So now I'm adding in two springs, and you think it'd go about twice as far, and that's actually just about true. It actually goes a quarter, maybe even a bit more, just because it gets a better launch. But now I figured I could probably improve on this by changing my spring setup a bit. So I'm replacing every spring in the old diamond with a diamond. So you see I have sort of a nested diamond shape going on. And this should give me, ideally, twice the pulling power on each spring. But that wasn't exactly what happened, it went from about going a quarter of the way to a third of the way. Which was good, but I was expecting better, but I, I figured I'd still run with it. So now I'm just going for even more springs. So now with four springs, I should go, again, twice as far. And this is roughly true. I'm going about halfway now. You see how the spring, the center pieces specifically, are sort of jutting out. This is weird, and it's definitely going to be hurting efficiency, but I didn't quite know what to make of it, so I just decided let's add more springs and see what happens. So right now, I think I have seven springs. And this should go, since we went halfway last time, almost the full distance. So you see I'm just fixing up the cradle now, and you see the launch I get here. And it's good, but it's like two-thirds of the way, and it's not as much as we were expecting. And also the center pieces are really jutting out now. So the solution to this was actually to replace the diamond spring with just a single compressed spring. And this would give me less compression force, but it doesn't slide out. You can see how the bottom two modules are much better than the top ones. So I decided to replace all of them with that single piece of spring. And even though it's counterintuitive, this actually does perform a bit better. It's not super significant, it went from about two-thirds to maybe seven-eighths. So I decide to keep that spring design around in case I want it, but I was going to try for a better one. And that's what I'm doing here, I'm going for a seven-part spring diamond. And the idea is that it's not going to compress the same way as the other one. You see, it only compresses about half its distance, but it has 14 springs all pulling against the car, so it should be able to fling it farther. And the single spring test isn't too telling, but I decided to try with two modules, and you see the launch I get here. That was almost halfway with just two. Remember, the other one took four spring modules to get to that point. So, I go for four and think I might get almost all the way there, and you'll see what happens. Also, I changed the background to a lighter one, just so that's a bit easier to see. That was pretty good, that almost got me all the way there, so I thought, that'll probably do it. So now I'm just moving all of the platforms over to give something for the car to drive on. I wanted to start the crossbow all the way against the wall, so that I had as much distance to shoot, since there's a 250 meter hard limit. You can extend that with modding, but I didn't quite want to do that here. And here I'm adding in a ramp mechanism. The idea is the car is going to drive up this ramp, it's going to get locked into the crossbow in some way, that ramp's going to go up, which, well that's going to be what's locking it, and then it's going to get shot out. Here I'm adding in the actual cradle mechanism. It's a single road for now, but I figure once I get there, I'll eventually fix it. What I'm adding in here is a guiding arm, and what the guiding arm does is it holds onto the carriage, so that once it fires its first shot, the hydraulics are able to return back to where they started. So I'm doing that here, I'm also reinforcing a bunch of those little platforms I drew in, and I'm adding in a stop sign at the top. So you see as the car drives up, it stops there. Now I'm reinforcing that arm, and you see it's not getting held in place by the spring yet, but the car still stops and it holds, so it's a good start. Now I'm adding in that spring mechanism that we decided on before. So you see, I actually got one more spring out of it, I have eight now instead of seven. This should give me a bit more compression force. 
Which works, because before it was actually not quite there. So you see it's holding, now I just need something to pull back the spring. And I'm going to do that with a diamond hydraulic setup. And what the diamond hydraulic does, is it pulls back not only a further distance than the regular hydraulic could, because it's made of multiple hydraulics, but also it can contract more than 50%, which normally the limit for hydraulics is a 50% contraction. But the way the diamond hydraulic kind of folds in on itself, it can contract more than that, which makes it ideal in a situation like this. So you see how it can charge back the spring. The guiding arm though wasn't quite strong enough, it kind of liked to just fold in on itself. And this was actually an easy enough fix, all I had to do is pull it out a bit, you see I'm doing that here. And giving that another go, you can see it, it's like half charged. So now I'm just going to add in a second diamond hydraulic. And this should let it pull back twice as far, which you'll see it ends up doing. So that's pretty good, but I realize here, I actually didn't give myself enough room, because I would need another hydraulic to be able to make this work, so or another diamond hydraulic. So I ended up pushing it forwards a bit, and you see what I get here. I also got rid of that guiding arm, because A, it didn't fit underneath the terrain, and B, it ended up being unnecessary anyways. So you see what I got here. And the car ends up driving up the ramp, and returns, but it's not quite set up right yet, so I'm using a split joint to let go of the spring all at once and pull the car forward. And you can see here, I didn't get a good grab, but it ended up working. And you see that launch was pretty good, but there's two problems with it. The first one is that I'm launching horizontally, which the optimal launch angle is 45 degrees, so that isn't going to work. And also the cradle sort of slips on top, well it slips over the car. So I need a better way to grab it. So you'll see I end up adding a road to the bottom of the cradle just to grab it a bit better. And also you see I moved up the spring, and I'm using a fixed joint at the top temporarily, eventually I'll change that out for an actual design that uses steel to get that point. So you see just with one spring I'm getting a really good launch. So now it's time, well, to get more springs. So you see I'm going for a three spring design here. But you see this launch I get. And it was pretty good, got me about halfway. So I realized I probably wasn't pulling back the springs as much as they could go. So I'm doing that here. And you see as the car goes up the ramp, and approaches that stop sign. The cradle sort of grabs it. It's actually not a great grab, you see it's pretty low. But apparently it's enough, it can fling the car forward. And it actually goes so far, it goes over the world border. You see here it just disappears. So you see I replaced that split joint with a bunch of steel. This is that I'm going to be able to angle the entire crossbow up and down, which you see will be important in the future. But also for now, I was thinking for loading the crossbow, I could do that while it's laying down. And then I can hydraulic it up, and then it can launch from there. So I'm doing that here with a bunch of steel. And I didn't realize how bad it looked at first. I'm just using some steel to hold it in place. BC it pulls back. And the whole thing's actually very unstable as well. And it kind of wants to wobble back and forth. But I decided here is where I'm going to try to angle it. And you can see how uneven the steel ends up looking. So I decided the first thing I want to do is just get everything on the grid line so that it looks way better. Also, so things are symmetrical, helps things from, well, prevents things from swaying so much since there should be less imbalance in the whole system. And I end up adding a second layer of steel trusses just to keep the whole thing a bit more rigid. And I actually go for a third layer of steel trusses just to keep it from swinging even more. This layer is a bit shorter than the others because I was a bit space constrained because of the bottom terrain. And here I'm redesigning the cradle just so that the car can't slip out of it as easily because that was a problem in the past. And I'm also fixing the, well not fixing, I'm changing the ramp system. So you see here it's just two hydraulics pulling straight up. And it works pretty well except for the fact that they're pulling at the wrong time and got pulled back by the cradle as well. But you see this just launches up, well pulls up, and then it can rip forward which is perfect. The hydraulics are kind of freaking out, but it's working, so I'm not too worried about it. Here is where I'm actually redesigning the cradle. So I'm doing that here, I'm just adding two roads on the sides to keep to make sure the car is staying in the inside of it. I'm just using some steel to hold it together. Alright, and now I'm actually putting in that hydraulic to lift up the whole mechanism. And you see it sort of awkwardly just like, turned on itself, and it ended up just being I had some extra steel pieces. But you see how that pulls up. So you see I'm moving in the hydraulic a bit closer to the rotational point just so I get more movement out of it. You can see here I almost get 45 degrees. I'm also adding a cable in here, and this is in the future, so that once I have the hydraulics shoot once, they're able to return back, and that I mean that cable is going to help them get back to the right spot. I'm also adding in an extra spring here. This just to get a bit more power and distance out of the whole system. So you see how it pulls back here. Car loads in, it angles up, and it ends up firing. And it gets almost all the way there. 
but actually this is a really easy fix this time around. All I need to do is add another diamond hydraulic, which I'm doing here. So after just extending all of the steel so that it grabs onto that, you see what I get. So now it pulls back. It actually goes back pretty far. The car gets knocked off, but it's just because I didn't move the loading platform onto the right spot yet. I'm adding back in those two pulling hydraulics. You see here the car gets loaded. Still tilts up. And that goes much further, which is good because the entire thing wasn't angled up too high. Alright, now I'm adding in a diamond hydraulic so that I can get even more distance and I can get more rotation out of the crossbow. So you see now I'm getting that 45 degrees, and it gets launched really far. Just kidding, I get stuck in the cradle. You can see here the wheel got caught in the back. This is actually a pretty easy fix, all I had to do is add in those two pieces of steel. So you see the cradle gets pulled back. Car gets loaded in. Holding tilts up. And this time it actually does let go. And it goes like the perfect distance, hits the mountain back there, which is great. So now with the car getting to its final destination, what I needed to do is make it repeatable, so the second car could get loaded in. So the first thing I did is you see those diamond hydraulics, I ended up adding diamond hydraulics sort of on top and on bottom of them. And the hope here is that they will be able to hold form. You see how it oscillates back and forth though, and this is just holding so much force, once it lets go, it just swings back and forth naturally. But I don't want this because it allows it to actually over compress and it can go in the wrong direction, which isn't what we want. So I'm going to try using springs here to hold it together, but it has enough force it just completely compresses the springs, which isn't good. So what I'm going to do is with a very careful set of measurements, add in a cable. And the idea with this cable is that once it gets, once the hydraulics contract all the way, it's going to be under tension and it's not going to allow the hydraulics to compress anymore. So you see here, they sort of get stuck and then they go right back, which is perfect. Now what I'm adding in is another split joint, at, or not split joint, fixed joint at the bottom. I'm adding in a hydraulic so I can get even more leverage. So you see with just one I get this much movement. But I actually want a diamond hydraulic here and this is for two reasons. The first one is to get more distance out of it since I want this to rotate 90 degrees. I'll explain why in a second. The second one is so that I can control angles. I want it to stop at 45 degrees and 90 degrees. So you see here it launches at about 45 degrees but it settles at 90 degrees. And here is why I want it to settle at about 90 degrees. What's going to happen with the spring is that it's going to swing back and forth, and eventually it's going to settle parallel with the crossbow mechanism, which allows the hydraulic mechanism to grab back onto it to pull it back again. So you see here this is like 32 times speed, how eventually it settles back into place. So all I need to do is add a fixed joint at the bottom here, and this is going to latch back onto the cradle mechanism so that I can pull it back a second time. Alright, now I'm very close, so what I want to do is see if I can get it to latch back in place. And this actually took me a very long time, and I cut out the attempts because they're painfully boring, just pixel tweaking to get the points to line up. You can see here, I'm going to have a quick shot. That's how they line up. Those points need to be on top of each other, and they are close there, but that's not close enough. So it took me a while. So after raising the back island, because actually I was, it fires further than I thought it would, and putting some more platforms behind the main car, because I end up, well I need a spot for the second car to sit, and adding in a stop sign, you can see it pulls back, car gets loaded in, it tilts back, I also added a delay here, so that it doesn't launch immediately, it waits about, well 20 seconds at 100% speed, and it's shorter at 300% speed, but just so that it stops swaying quite so much, and gets a bit more of an accurate shot. And here I have to wait for it to recombine. I end up getting the latch here. And that looked really bad, but it was at a really sped up speed. But you see here I get the second June buggy in place, and everything is good up to this point. And it starts loading in, and this is still good. But the issue is right here. It ends up kind of getting in the cradle, but not quite, because the cradle is a bit further forward than it normally would be. So what ends up happening is the loading mechanism slips out underneath the car, and the cradle, since the entire crossbow sort of gets tilted down a bit more, the car falls out of it, which is a bit lame. And I played with that for probably about an hour, couldn't get a solution, but it ended up being I could just use a Vespa, which is one of the bikes, and it was way easier. Because it's a smaller car, it can fit a bit better in the cradle. So you can see here the car gets loaded in. And this first tune buggy works perfectly. You see here I get a launch to the main island. And then I cut out waiting for that to swing back and forth, but it reattaches, pulls back. 
the Vespa goes in place, also stops at its stop sign. I turned up the braking intensity all the way so that it would not move, and it barely worked. You see, it's right on the edge there. But it ends up going in the cradle, and after 20 or 30 seconds, it launches. It ends up hitting that back island, or the back mountain, and goes off the edge. So all I had to do here was just move the flag, and now the Vespa hits it. And this is a level completion, so now what I'm going to show is a complete showing of everything that's happening. So you see in the main screen, I have the entire level, and on the bottom right, I'm going to have whatever is important to be showing on screen at the moment. Alright, thanks everyone for watching. This was definitely a very long video to make. It was about three times the normal amount of time it takes me to make a video. So if you could leave a like, that would be awesome. <laughs> uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more Polybridge 2 content. And otherwise, yeah, until next time.